As far as set relationships go, the two big things, and there are these two definitions up here, they're the ideas of union and intersection. And we've already kind of talked about intersection, we just didn't call it that, because it shows up in the Venn diagrams. It's where you have the overlap. So like that overlap part where the A and the B circles have an element or a couple elements in common, that's the intersection. So that's really its name. And just by definition, the intersection of A and B, which is itself a set, um, more specifically, it's a set containing elements in both A and B. So in the Venn diagram, it's the overlap. The union of A and B, on the other hand, is the set containing the elements either in A or B or both. That's the key. Like if there's something that's sort of a common mistake here, it's thinking that you would leave out the both part. You don't. The both part is okay. That's fine. That's part of the union. So I guess really what that means is that the intersection is always a subset of the union. That would be true. Um, and then there's the notation. The union notation, um, I think most people look at that, and I do too, and I think, okay, that looks like a U for union. That makes sense. And then the intersection one, it's basically that symbol, but upside down. So um, unfortunately, that doesn't really look like a letter. It doesn't look like an I. Maybe it sort of looks like an N, if you think of intersection, I guess. Um, I always just think of it as it's the upside down U. So either way, I guess. Um, but in a Venn diagram where these things would be, like that's what I really wanted to draw here. So let's see. I guess I don't need to make this too elaborate, but here's U, and then if that's A, and that's B, then where the intersection would be, it's the overlap. So yeah, how about this purplish color? Right there, right? That's the intersection. Um, it's in that overlap part, right? So it's the purplish color. All right, then the union this one, well, I'm going to have more shading to do this time. So let's see. Make another rectangle. And then that's U. And if that's A. And then that's B. Then this one's an either or. So really, you just have to shade in everything in both circles. So it would be you know, all of this, right? Everything that's in the A but not in B part. Um, it would be the intersection, right? Because A or B or both, right? So the both is okay. Or this part up here. So this the B but not an A. So all of those are going to work. All right, so generally that's what you've got as far as what the intersection is and then um, what the union is um, in a Venn diagram. So then we've got an example where it's from the Venn diagram, figure out what A is, figure out what B is, intersection, union. All right, so I think I've got enough room underneath to get all four. We are going to find out, but I'm pretty sure that's going to work. So for A... The A circle would include right, the five and the six, but also these three in the overlap. And since order doesn't really make a difference, I would just write these going left to right. And I'd say, well, you'd have the five and the six, but then you'd also have the two and the nine and the eight. And I'd say, that's what A is. And then for B, kind of a similar thing, where you'd have this overlap, but you also have this part of B out here that doesn't overlap with A. Right, like this is the circle for B. So you want to get all those numbers in there. So then B is going to be the set consisting of, and I'm just going to go left to right again. So you got two, nine, and eight in the overlap, and then four, one, and seven over on the right that, that are just in B. Okay, well then the intersection is the overlap itself. So the intersection would be the numbers that are in both so that's just two, nine, and eight. And then the union 
would be everything that's in one or the other or both. And you could just go left to right again and say, well, then that'll be five and six, and then two, nine, eight, and then four, one, seven. And that would cover it. So I just went left to right here. I got the ones that are just in A, then the ones in both, and the ones that are just in B. Um, but I mean, I guess if you wanted to write it differently in like in a different order, there is certainly nothing wrong with that. Um, next example, um, how to get the union if you've got the two sets written out. I don't want to say what I'm about to do is a trick, but I think it's by far the easiest thing you can do. So the union is going to be everything that's in either A or B or both. What I'm going to do when I write it out is I'm just going to write out A verbatim, just like it is there. And then I'm just going to add in whatever is in B that's not in A. Because then it basically cuts the work in half. So what I'm going to do for A union B is I'm going to say, well, everything in A would be in the union. So I'd have R, B, Z, X, A, and H. And then I'd also have whatever is over here in B that's not an A. So A we've already got, J we don't, M we don't, X we've already got, but we don't have S, and we don't have D. Done. So in that type of situation where you've got everything listed out using the roster method, I think that's the way to go. Just throw one set in there entirely, and then for the other one, it's whatever wasn't in the first one that's in the second one. you got to include those two. At least for the union, that's what you would do, right? For the intersection, it would work a little differently. The intersection here, so not that this is actually asked, but it would be, really, it's just X and A, right? It's uh, the two that are in both. So if you wanted to get the intersection, it's just X and A. All right, but speaking of intersections, that's actually what number three is about. So if A is a set of natural numbers that are perfect squares and B is a set of natural numbers between 5 and 50 exclusive, so exclusive means you don't include the endpoints, right? So starting with 6 because you don't include the 5. So 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and so forth up to 49, but you don't include the 50 because of the exclusive. Okay, so the set of natural numbers that are perfect squares... I guess if you were going to figure these out, what you'd be doing is you'd be going, all right, I need one squared, and then I need two squared, and then I need three squared, and then I need four squared, right? So you're basically going to do this. So that's what I'm going to write out. So one squared is one, two squared is four, three squared is nine, then four squared is 16, five squared is 25, six squared is 36, seven squared is 49, 8 squared is 64, 9 squared is 81, and so forth. Right? 10 squared is 100, 11 squared is 121 if you want to keep going. But we've actually gone farther than we need to here. Because B, when we write that out, that's going to be, like we said a minute ago, 6, 7, 8, 9, and so forth, up to and including 49, but not 50. Right? So it's the natural numbers strictly between 5 and 50. So then how do you get the intersection or what would be the easier way to do it? Um, what I'd be doing is I'd be thinking, okay, well, the intersection can't include anything above 49, right? Because there's nothing in B above 49. And then it can't include anything below 6, right? And then anything that's in that intersection has to be a perfect square. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at what we have for A. I'm going to leave out the ones less than 6 and leave out the ones greater than 49. And that should do it. So A intersect B. So if I start going through what we've got in A, 1 is too small, right? Because that's less than 6. So is 4. But 9 is going to work. That's in both. So is 16. So is 25, so is 36, so is 49, but that's the last one. Because if you keep going with A, you get 64, but that's too big for B, so that's not going to be in the intersection. So is 81, that's too big, so, and everything else would be too big as well. 
So that's what we're going to end up with. It's just those five. So 9, 16, 25, 36, and 49. Um, and I guess the strategy that I used there to piece that together, that's one way to do it. Um, for this sort of thing, there are going to be multiple routes that get you to the same place, right? Um, you just want to, I guess, pick whichever one feels like it makes the most sense or whichever one you're most comfortable with. And that's what mine is. I, I figured, well, I'll pick this one because I can see, like, you can't be... If, so if I just use a different color, I'm thinking you can't be past that and down here can't be past that right because this doesn't go below six so then basically you're just left with those that's more or less what my thought process is there but there are a few different routes that you can take and end up in the right spot all right let's see number four so what if why is the set of natural numbers between 1 and 16 that are divisible by 3 and then z is a set of even natural numbers between 4 and 10 inclusively. Um, and then which of the following is not a subset of y union z? Okay, there's a lot happening here. And there are questions like this that show up in the homework, which is why I wanted to get one like this in here. Um, you don't have to write out what y and z would be and then y union z, but it certainly wouldn't hurt. So that's what I'm going to start with. I'm going to say, okay, y is natural numbers between 1 and 16 divisible by 3 or multiples of three. So like three, six, nine, 12, that kind of thing. So if I'm gonna write out what Y actually is, so it's gonna be three, six, nine, 12, 15. And that's actually it because it says it's gotta be natural numbers between one and 16. And if you were just going by three, the next thing you'd have was 18, that's too big. So that's what Y is. Then z is even natural numbers between 4 and 10 inclusively. So z, so z is going to be starting with 4 because you, you do include the endpoints, right? That's what inclusive is, right? So you'd have 4, 6, 8, and 10, right? So you got the 4 and the 10 because of the inclusively. And then we can figure out what y union z is, right? That doesn't look like it's so bad. So y union z and i'll just use the strategy that i used before i'm just going to write out y entirely get all those elements in there and then what else is in z well four that wasn't in y um six was but eight's not and ten's not so i need to add those in here as well okay there's y union z so then which one is not a subset of those four options well let's see a 12 9 and 4 there's 12, there's nine, there's four. Looks like we're good. Um, another way you could do that is you, if you were just gonna use the properties, like if you didn't write out what Y, Z, and the union were, then you could say, well, 12 is a multiple of three, so is nine, and then four fits into Z because it's an even number between four and 10. Um, B, the six is fine, the 10's fine, the eight's fine, 14's not fine, because that's not a multiple of three, and it's an even natural number, but it's bigger than 10. So this is the one that's the problem. So I guess I'll write it in down here that B contains 14, right? Specifically, the 14 is the problem. So B contains 14, which would mean that B is not a subset of y union z and i would write this kind of in words like this if you wanted it in symbols i guess i could do that so like 14 is an element of b and then that would imply that b is not a subset of y union z so the symbol for not a subset is the subset symbol with a line through it to symbolate so to symbolize not right? Um, just like when you see a road sign that says no U-turn, right? It's got the diagonal line going through it. Same thing, um, right? The same logic. Um, all right, then C, um, like just to run through the other ones, 15, that's divisible by 3, so it's 3, and then 4 and 10 are the endpoints of this thing, but it's inclusive, so they're going to work. Or you could look over here and go, huh, 15, 4, 10, 3, got it. 
Um, D, I just wanted to bring this up again, that the empty set is a subset of every set. So since Y union Z is itself a set, the empty set would have to be a subset of it. So D, the empty set is totally fine. Um, and I just really wanted to mention that, that property again, because if you're not used to the idea of the empty set, um, it takes some getting used to, right? That's not something that's intuitive, that the empty set is always a subset of everything. But sure, that has no elements. So therefore, every element that's in there is an element of Y union Z. Or I guess the other way to look at it is um, there's nothing in D that's not in Y union Z. Well, there couldn't be because there's nothing in D at all, right? Okay, so I guess that's enough for that example. Um, five. Oh, I like this. This is actually really short. Um, and um, what happens is kind of worth it. So the, the N and Z, when they're written bold like that, so the N is the natural numbers, and then the Z is the integers, right? So if N is, and I guess I can write these up here. I think I've got enough space up here. So N, the natural numbers. So that's the counting numbers, just like they were before, right? One, two, three, four, and so forth. And then bold Z, that's the integers. So I guess I need the ellipsis on both ends. And then I'll write it as maybe negative three, negative two, negative one, zero, one, two, three, and then ellipsis up there. Okay, so then what would be the intersection? And I think you can see it just by having them written out that um, everything in the natural numbers is positive, but these are all integers. And then like all of these numbers are actually in here. Sure, um, another way to say the set of natural numbers would be just to say the set of positive integers, right? Positive integers and natural numbers are the exact same thing. So, all right, well then it looks like everything that would be common to both would be all of the positive integers. So one, two, three, four, and so forth, but that's just N. Mm hmm right? By definition, that's just N. And then what about the union? So natural numbers union integers. Well, there, it's anything that's an either, or, or both. Well, positive integers, but those we already said are in there. So it's gonna be those plus everything else that's part of Z. So really it's just Z, right? So if I wrote this out, what the union would be, I'm just gonna be rewriting Z. I'm gonna write a couple less numbers just because I'm feeling slightly lazy. And then there, that's Z. So why is this happening? Where when we've got the two sets that we're looking at, and we try to figure out their union, their intersection, that the intersection is one of them and the union is the other one. Like, why does that happen? That happens when one set is a subset of the other, right? If one set's a subset of the other, then the one that's the subset, that's gonna be the intersection. Um, and then the one that contains the other set ends up being the union. And that's what happens here. So there are homework questions that relate to these common number sets. Um, I think when I went through and looked, there was one where it's like, you know, what's the intersection of Q and N and things like that. So I wanted to get one with the number sets in here, but also if you have two sets and you're trying to figure out the union and intersection, but one of those original sets is a subset of the other one, then the union and intersection end up being really clean, where it's just like the intersection's one of them, the union's the other one. Um, and it, it's nice when that happens, right? Like that, it feels easier. So yeah, that's nice. All right, let's see. Number six is another one that involves the integers. So that's the universal set. A is even integers, and then B is odd integers, and C is positive integers, aka natural numbers. Then we're gonna find a couple of intersections and a union. Okay, let's see. So if I just write these out, then A is supposed to be even integers. So I guess I need the ellipsis on the left here 
because I'm going to have things like negative 4, negative 2, 0, 2, 4, and so forth, right? Because then you're also on this side, you're going to have 6 and 8 and 10 and 12. And on the other side, negative 6, negative 8, negative 10, negative 12. Then B is odd, so okay, fine. I guess then like negative 3, negative 1, 1, 3 in the middle, right? Because then on the ellipsis on the right, you're going to have 5, 7, 9, and so forth. The one on the left, you're going to have negative 5, negative 7, negative 9. And then C is positive integers, so yeah, that's really just the natural numbers. So 1, 2, 3, 4, and so forth. Okay, then we were supposed to figure out A intersect B, A union B, and A intersect C. Um, you can do it based off of these, but you could also do it in set builder notation. So I'm going to write that in. You don't need the set builder notation, but for some people that's going to feel more concrete here. So I wanted to include it. So A intersect B, if you were going to write that in set builder notation, since the intersection symbol translates to and, right? Because that's both, um, like elements that are in A and B. So if you were going to write this out in set builder notation, it would be if X is an element of Z such that X is even and X is odd, there is no number that's going to satisfy that, right? It's both even and odd. So what you're going to get here is nothing, right? You're going to have no elements, so you're going to have the empty set. Um, so either written that way or written with the brackets with nothing in them. Either way. And I think um, you can do it this way off the set builder notation, or you can do it by looking at these. And you go, yeah, there's nothing that would be in both. Right? Because here it's like you got 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, and the negatives and 0. Here you have 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11, and the negatives of those. So, yeah, nothing in the overlap, nothing that's common to both of those sets. But then what's A union B? Well, if you write that one out in set builder notation, you'd end up with the set of all integers. So x is an element of z such that x is even or x is odd. So that's the key. And I should highlight these, put them in a different color. Um, so and and or. Um, so basically it's that intersection translates to and and union translates to or. But even or odd, that would be everything because there's no third option. Right? Every number is either even or odd, at least every integer. Um, so, all right, that would be everything. So then that looks like it would be all integers. And then the last one, A intersect C. All right, this is the one where really maybe the set builder notation is going to be the most helpful. So... It would be if x is an element of the integers such that, and to be in A, it's got to be even. To be in C, it's got to be positive. So we'll say x is even and x is positive. All right, so it's the and again because this is an intersection. So even and positive, and you can also do it just kind of building it off of these. You could say, well, what's in both? Well, um, these have all got to be positive. So anything that's not positive, we can basically throw out for the intersection, right? Because there's not going to be a negative 2 or a negative 4 or a 0 or a negative 10 or anything in C, right? If everything in C is positive. But 2 would be in both, and so would 4, and so would 6, and so would 8, right? So even and positive what you'd end up with would be the set consisting of 2, 4, 6, 8, and so forth, like that. All right, then the last one, 
if the universal set is a set consisting of all integers between 1 and 12 inclusive, A is the set of all powers of 2 or 3. Ooh, that's interesting. And then we're going to find A complement. Okay, there are some complement questions thrown in in this section, even though that definition and most of those questions show up in the last section. There are a couple that show up here too. So I intentionally picked one where the set A itself is a union because it's powers of two or three, right? So or is union. And we're going to need to use that. All right, so powers of two. All right, so I guess I could write this in set notation because then we can kind of view A as a union of two sets. So two to the zero is one, so I actually do have to use that, right? So you have two to the zero, two to the first, two squared, two cubed, right? That's basically what we're gonna have. And that's actually gonna be it here because two cubed is eight. So that's between 1 and 12 inclusive, but 2 to the 4th is 16, that's too big. So it's actually going to be this, which most people would write as 1, 2, 4, and 8. And then for the powers of 3, then what we're going to have there is we'd have 3 to the 0. 3 to the 1st is 3, that works. 3 squared is 9, that works. 3 cubed is 27, that's too big, right? Because we've got to be between 1 and 12. So then this will be the set consisting of 1, 3, and 9. So then A is the union of those, right? So A would be powers of 2 or powers of 3. So powers of 2 are 1, 2, 4, and 8. And then the powers of 3 are 1, 3, and 9. We already got the 1, so I'm just going to put in the 3 and the 9. And then just to make the next step easier, I'm going to write those numbers in order that are in A, right? Because then we got to figure out the complement. It's like, all right, well, what's not in A that's in the universal set? That's way easier, I think, if these are in order. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 8, and 9. So you don't have to do too much to put them in order. You just got to take the three and move down there. All right. So then a complement. Um, so the universal set is one, two, three, four, five, six, up to twelve. Um, let's see. One, two, three, and four are in a, but five and six and seven are not. So those are going to be in here. So five, six, seven, eight, and nine are in a, so they're not in the complement. But then ten. 11 and 12 are in the universal set, but they're not in A, so they're in the complement. So that's what we end up with there. So with this one, ultimately, yes, it's a complement problem, but most of the work is just getting A, right? Once you have A, A complements pretty fast, right? But in order to get A, that was a little bit of work because you had to go, all right, what are the powers of 2 that are less than or equal to 12? What are the powers of 3 that are less than or equal to 12? And then we just need the union of those. So the work was in getting A. To get from A to A complement, that's the little step. To get from starting the problem to A, that's the big step. Um, but I think that covers basically the types of stuff that would show up in this homework assignment. Because I did need to work this back in because there are some complements in there.